The regressor and the blind saint revelation five days have passed since then. The cottage's reparation was proceeding smoothly. The original roof was torn off, and the new roof that was made by cutting down trees was placed in its place. I also fixed a chair without a single leg and a bed with a messed up frame. What remains is the repairing of the fence and to place the furniture and equipment inside. Vera's lips curled up to form a satisfying smile at the sight of the cottage that now seemed a bit more homely. This is enough for a place to live in. The fence can be rebuilt later with the help of the twins. The equipment has already been ordered by him and will be delivered by Norn. And soon he felt a sense of stability as the fire that had been rushing him was finally extinguished. Vera then moved to the center of the vacant lot in front of the cottage. Today is, it is a day to demonstrate the divine battle art that he has been trying to come up with for the past five days. Yes, the path Vera had chosen for himself was divine battle art. He read the textbook he had received from Trevor to build basic knowledge about divine battle arts, and based on that, he tried to approach the power in various ways. But in the end what came out was the conclusion that the power of the earth could not be fused with the divine battle arts, unlike the twins' power of immortality itself. There was a problem that it was difficult to apply to the body due to lack of intuition. Once the set value was fixed, there was also a problem that the existing disadvantages of immediate response during battle were not compensated enough because it was difficult to cope with ever-changing situations while it was implemented. So, in order to solve such a problem, Vera turned to philosophical laws. If it is difficult to infuse it within the body, then he can imbue that power to the outside. If it is difficult to respond to a situation immediately, then he can create an environment where there is no need for him to respond. Using the law, the space itself is engraved with the power of rules. If you turn the surrounding area into a battlefield that is advantageous to you, all the above shortcomings will be compensated. The power of oath is the power of rules. It is the power to engrave the vows into concrete rules and to receive the promise of power corresponding to it. So, it was not impossible to utilize this way of using the aspect of rules itself. The next thing I did after coming up with that idea was to create an intent that would make it come true. Fortunately, the theory necessary for the conception could be extracted by studying the interpretations of intent received from Trevor, a ceremony that is going to last for five days. Now is the first demonstration, of course. The level of completion was very high, but the depth of understanding was shallow. Since clumsy perfection is a factor that needs to be gradually improved in the future, what Vera focused on in this demonstration was the way to conjure up the intent. Vera took a deep breath and unleashed the divinity inside, fusing power of stigma with divinity. Thinking about it that way, the divinity turned gray. The process itself seemed really easy, as Trevor stated, when releasing the divinity, it was necessary to drill a passageway through the location where the stigma was located. Vera confirmed the ashen divinity, he then gathered it and scattered it around. Condensation, the most basic use of divinity, when he did it, the divinity that had been scattered like ashen smoke in the air became entangled with each other and turned into multiple threads. Now. All the materials that will be the frame for the sword intent have been gathered. Without any delay, Vera led the thread he had created in front of his chest. First thing to do, fixed coordinates, to set the coordinates to which the range of the intent applies. The longest streak of divinity was woven in the form of a circle. Whoosh whoosh, divinity bellowed, divinity swirled around Vera. The next thing to do is set the range. Five steps. A distance of about mm. Vera's ability has not yet reached the point where he can apply it to a wide range yet. Among the threads that hovered around him, Vera drew the range as he set the formula by weaving the longest ones. A circle in charge of fixing the coordinates connected by the longest thread. In the middle of it, 
there was a vacant space, an eclipse woven in the shape of a sphere. At first glance, the formula that looks like a belt of satellites orbiting the planet and its surroundings has been completed. Vera went through the process and looked around himself. It's a success. The scattered divinity stayed within the setting range. Now, all he had to do was the application of the most important power. Vera came up with a rule to engrave in this space with a radius of about a minute. Stability had to be considered. So, Vera engraved a rule that could give the least variation in the visible range. In this area, all motor abilities increase by, however, it must not move faster than the falling leaves. If this rule is violated, the subject will lose of all motor capacity for minutes. Wuxi, intent vibrated as the Eshin divinity arranges and engraves the rules in space. The reason the penalty was set stronger than the strength obtained is because the power of the oath has such a characteristic. The condition of the oath is about keeping it, therefore, the penalty to be injured for violating it should be set higher than the compensation that is naturally obtained. Vera felt that the activation of the intent was just around the corner in the space where the power was engraved again. Now I just need to trigger it. A short remaining strand of divinity, Vera moved them and engraved the name of the master of the rules with the intent. All these rules are proclaimed under the name of Lushan, Enforcement of Rules. The process of ensuring it in the name of God. Let's finish this. Whoosh. The wind swirling inside the space flowed significantly slower than the surrounding breeze. Vera knew what that meant. It was a phenomenon where the blowing wind inside the space broke the set rules. Done. An exhilarating joy crept up his spine. Vera did not try to suppress the smile that appeared on his lips and looked around satisfyingly. It wasn't just the wind. Flying leaves and insects. Everything that violated the rules of space was moving one beat slower than what's outside the space. Strictly speaking, it was correct to classify it as a failure. Didn't that affect even non-living things? Of course. It happened because we did not set strict rules, but fundamentally, it was a phenomenon where powers that were not completely controlled were springing up at will, however. This is clearly an error that can be fixed through improvement. Vera decided to rejoice in the immediate success rather than be disappointed in such secondary matters. Suddenly, in Vera's head, he remembered a big laugh that was mocking him. Vera's smile deepened at the thought that crossed his mind. It was because of the thought that there was something to give to the old man. The Apostle of Guidance has returned. It was Norn's words, the vacant lot in front of the cottage. Vera, who was in the middle of working on the courthouse, recalled a fact that had been thrown into a corner by Norn's words. Ah, uh, are you the one in charge of Revelation? Yes. The Apostle told you to be ready because you will receive a revelation tomorrow. Revelation. This ceremony of receiving the trials of the gods was an event organized by the Apostles of Guidance from generation to generation. Bora, commonly called the God of Travelers. This is because the connection between the heavenly realm and the real world is possible only with his power. The fact that Vera's revelation was held at the end of the week was also because the Apostle of Guidance was on an outing, so he had to wait for his return. Vera nodded his head slightly in answer to Norn's words, then posed a question due to the curiosity that crossed his mind. What is the Apostle of Guidance like? It was a natural question for Vera. What was the behavior of the Apostles he came across? A pair of imbeciles, a lunatic, and a wacky old man. Aren't they all humans who were out of norms? Then Vera, who harbored a certain amount of prejudice against the apostles, asked a question with a hint of suspicion to that. Norm's body trembled. Embarrassment was etched on his face. His stuttering words amplified his suspicions. Through that reaction, Vera was able to realize it at once. The number of retards has increased. Even that man who is an apostle of guidance would not be sane. 
Vera was getting more and more stressed. With that thought, a look of annoyance appeared on Vera's face. After hesitating for a while, Norn avoided Vera's eyes and continued speaking in a troubled tone. He is a cheerful person. Vera struggled to grasp the words. Cheerfulness and lunacy were concepts that obviously existed in different realms. Vera wasn't stupid enough to know that it wasn't Norn's fault that he was a lunatic. The next day, around noon the revelation was scheduled. Vera went to the chapel of the Grand Temple and met Trevor, who was praying there. Trevor, Trevor, who had been praying for a long time, lifted his head. Trevor found Vera and greeted him with a bright face. Oh, Vera, are you here for a revelation? Yes. Where would I have to go? Follow me. I also have to attend, so I think we should go together. Will Sir Trevor also attend? Oh, uh, I haven't explained yet. The ceremony of revelation is an essential observance event for all remaining apostles in the Holy Kingdom. Vera trembled by his subsequent explanation. All, you mean, those humans gather in one place. It was because of that thought that Vera's body trembled. Trevor nodded in the same energetic tone as before, perhaps not noticing something strange in Vera's reaction. Yes, the Apostle of Love and Abundance cannot come because she is dispatched outside, and the seats of Apostles of the Lord and Death are vacant, so we will be gathering five this time. Well, looking at it this way, it seems that there are a lot of Apostles in this generation. Usually, there are not more than five in an era. Trevor continued speaking, to that, Vera nodded his head without saying anything and continued his trail of thought. The vacancy is, years later, all the vacant seats will be filled, during the dawn of the war against the Demon King, right now, years later, the stigma of the Lord will be bestowed upon Rini, and after more years, the Apostle of Death will also take their seat, while the Apostle of Judgment remains vacant after Varga's death, the next master of the stigma will appear when the battle with the Demon King is in full swing, of course. Not all of them were involved in the war, wasn't very just avoiding the war at the time, each river. The Apostle of Wisdom, the Apostle of Guidance he will soon meet, in addition, those who he has not yet met, such as the Apostle of Love, were not known as they guarded the interior of the castle by the time the war was in full swing. That was the reason there was no information about them. While Vera was in the midst of contemplating, he threw his gaze at Trevor, who was muttering by himself. Did he mention it was the Apostles of Guidance and Love? The work entrusted by the Apostles of Wisdom from generation to generation, it was only when he came here that he realized why he was not known in his previous life. Perhaps the Apostles of Guidance and Love were not known because they had similar roles. Suddenly, Vera felt a sense of suffocation creeping up inside him. Even though he had already lived one life and knew almost all the events of the continent, he could not take advantage of the limited information about the Holy Kingdom. Due to this limited information, I can plan for sure what will happen to Rene, who I will meet later, and how to deal with her. At the thought that flashed through his mind, Vera's forehead frowned slightly, and Trevor, who saw him, realized only then that Vera's expression was unusual. Vera, are you sick? No, I'm just a little nervous. Ah, uh, if that's the case, I can empathize. I remember the day when I first received a revelation, the stigma that appeared suddenly while I was working as an apprentice wizard in the tower, the wonder and blessing of that day. As the day of revelation comes, they come like a wave of water and shakes my heart. That's why I shed tears without knowing. Words that followed one after another, Vera's brows furrowed. But Trevor was so absorbed in his story that he did not notice his expression. Vera remembered the thought of wanting to sue a human mouth after a long time. time.